Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan and I'm a marketer and coronavirus or COVID-19 has been affecting a lot of people all over the world and it's actually affected me as a marketer myself. So about a week or so ago, I had the idea of getting different marketers on a Zoom call that I can post online and really just share some insight as far as how they're uh, adjusting to COVID-19 and any practical tips or advice or strategies that you can implement today. Um, to position yourself to succeed moving forward within this uh, pandemic. So with that said, today's guest I'm super excited to have on. His name is Alejandro Reyes. He's a great friend, great marketer, great leader. Uh, thanks for coming on this call, Alejandro. Thanks, man. <clears throat> and here's the thing, man. You know, it's, it's, I love that you're doing this. It's not something um, that, that a lot of people uh, should be ashamed about, I mean, there's 26 million people unemployed now. I just read the, the latest stat. And so, uh, man, I love that you're doing this to help add value to, to folks live, whether you're an existing marketer that has not been let go, you run an agency or you're someone that, you know, maybe has let go. I think hopefully some of the stuff we talk about today can help you help, help you to be, um, become more indispensable at an organization. So if you don't mind, just give us a quick little intro on who you are, what you do, and really who you serve uh, from a customer base. Yeah, man. So uh, we run an agency uh, helping um, mainly thought leaders, experts, authors, speakers, uh, you know, turn um, a lot of their content into courses. We help them scale courses. And so at the end of the day, man, we use Facebook ads, Instagram, paid advertising to drive traffic to sell stuff. Uh, and so we work with some, you know, some of the biggest brands in our niche and uh, it's been, it's been incredible, man. Awesome. So I just want to dive right into it and ask you right away, how has uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus affected you and your business right now? Yeah, great question. So it hasn't affected us ton in a sense of like, you know, at first I was like, man, like, you know, I see the unemployment. I'm like, man, am I going to get fired from some clients or something? And that's a real feeling. And, you know, the crazy thing is like, you know, in the last 45 days of, you know, recording this, you know, we've been kind of in, uh, in uh, isolation and, and shelter or whatever they're calling it. But uh, I picked up, man, two really, really, really large clients. Like we're talking the thought leaders and authorities in my space, in my niche, um, which is crazy to me still. And, and so for me, I've, I've worked from home for 20 plus years. Um, I know I look so young, um, but no, I, I, uh, I, it hasn't really changed much other than my kids now. There's no school the rest of the year. So that's been the most challenging thing. But uh, I feel like I was been built for this because I've been doing it for so long. So I'm working with a lot of organizations and helping them figure out how to be more, you know, get their teams to be more productive at home. So, uh, so it hasn't affected us ton, you know, and I think that's, you know, one of my biggest things and we've talked about this recently is like, <clears throat> if you can get big results for people, man, you become indispensable. And so if you, if you're inside of an organization or you run an agency or something, and you're a marketer, you want to start an agency, man, if you, if you, when people, when a, when a client or when a company is looking at their expenses and they go like, man, what should we, cause that's what a lot of organizations are doing and who do we let go or what, you know, what do we do? <clears throat> and then they look at you and go, man, like, you know, that person is so important to this organization. And the reality is a lot of organizations just are running out of money. So that's, that's a real thing as well. But I always want to make sure that I'm, I'm adding so much value that when people look at me, they go like, I, there's just no way our business is where it's at. So there, we, we would be ridiculous to, you know, fire Alejandro and his agency, you know? I actually want to dive a little bit deeper into what you were just talking about becoming indispensable. What are your thoughts on, um, you know, more of a specialist versus a generalist and including into that conversation and like a T-shaped marketer and how to position yourself to be uh, in a great spot as a marketer. So the real question is, should I be a specialist or should I be a generalist? So a general physician, um, you know, some doctor, family doctor, that's like one, you know, it's such a broad thing, but a heart surgeon. Now that person is a specialist and you can see it with how much money they make too. And so a T-shaped market is someone that, that knows a, lot, a little about a lot of things or they're well-versed in a lot of things, but they're actually known for something. And so 
for me, um, you know, I think you got to be known for something. Yeah, hey, Jonathan, what does he do? Yeah, he does this, 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 this. Okay, cool. What is he actually the best at? So you got to figure out what can you be the best in the world at and focus on that one thing. And so for a new marketer, I'm going, man, what's the one thing that you can learn? And hopefully that one thing, you're actually good at it and you like it, you enjoy it because you got to enjoy it. I started out doing SEO and affiliate marketing and I, never, I was like, hey, you know, you never need to use paid advertising because SEO is the game. And now I'm doing paid advertising saying, why do you want to do SEO where it's going to take you six months to rank for that big keyword, but why don't you just send traffic and I can get traffic in the next two hours. So, so I've switched, you know, obviously, but, uh, but yeah, I would say become like known for one thing and companies like great companies, good managers, good organizations will hire people that are specialists. What are some of the like intangible characteristics you believe like a marketer or really anyone right now work, uh, looking for a job or looking to remain in their job uh, to become indispensable uh, and make themselves essential, whether it's helping out their manager, their CEO, their company at large? What are some of those characteristics that you think really would help out during this time? It's a lot of those intangibles that you're talking about, man. Like, OK, great. We, we hired him to do this job description you know, what are the other intangibles? I think it's coachability. If someone's teachable, coachable, uh, I love that. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, figure out, they, 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 you know, everything's figure outable. So these people, instead of asking you um, for every little thing that you've told them last week and you don't know why they haven't written that down, but they actually can figure it out. Like they can YouTube it. They don't mind doing the work. Someone that can figure out things. And then, and then the third would be just someone that goes over and above. Like if your job description says, hey, man, you need to post, you're a social media manager, and you need to post Monday through Sunday, every single day, um, you know, one post per week, and that person's only doing that thing, man, I don't, I don't know if I want them on my team, you know. I want someone that's like, you know what, how can we make this better? And Alejandro, I'm going to show you the metrics. I'm going to tell you why on Fridays that's not a good thing, so we're changing that. And instead of doing one post a week, we're actually going to do three posts Monday through Friday, and we're going to take Saturday off and then post again Sunday. But like someone that's coming to me with solutions versus like, well, here's an idea. Should we do this? No, I want to know why we should do it. So those are probably a couple – few things that uh that are really important to me right now as i think of as i think of covid and people that you know work with and et cetera, et cetera. i completely agree with what you just shared um i especially coming from an agency owner and, and a ceo i think it really uh resonates with me you know just finding ways to add value um but with that obviously within the marketing space there's a lot of tactics there's a lot of strategies there's a lot of cut, cutting edge um, you know, ideas just coming out within the space. Uh, and so my question to you is how are you staying on the cutting edge? Like, what are you listening to? Uh, who are you watching? Um, and, and really what kind of content are you, are, are you using to become a better marketer? Yeah. So best strategy always wins. So, so if you can figure out strategy, there's always tactics that come and go. You know, TikTok, everybody should be doing TikTok. You know, Facebook, everybody should. LinkedIn video, everybody should be doing LinkedIn video. So there's so many different tactics. But if you have the right foundation and strategy, I think you always win. And for me, it has everything to do with psychology. It has everything to, to do with really understanding your audience. Those are, those are not, you know, the tactics that most new marketers are trying to get. Ooh, if I learn that tactic, no, man, you got to learn how to write some good copy. You need to learn how to create messaging that, uh, that attracts people and gets them to buy things, not just make them feel good and get a little dopamine hit, but man, someone that would actually buy something. So, so I'm always trying to figure out, and I'm funny thing is I'm rereading all the old books that I read two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And so I, I, I think for me, you know, it's like, you know, I only follow a couple marketers. Um, just a lot of noise out there. If you have too many coaches, too many mentors, you're going to hear a lot of different noises. And 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 the the reason a lot of people want to find a new mentor, want to find because it's not what they wanted to hear it was the truth, but they didn't want to hear it. And so for me, man, I'm like mentors. Let me find one or two mentors. 
books, content. That let me find one or two people, YouTube channels. Let me find one or two, just so that I can I can make sure to 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 not have hundreds of voices in my head because man, you know Donald Miller talks about if you confuse, you lose, and so I'm not. I don't want to be confused. I want clarity because clarity, bro, clarity in what you're supposed to be doing, clarity in your skill set gives you confidence. It literally gives you confidence in who do I want on my team? People that are confident. I'm going to get this done. I'm so clear at, at, on your vision. I, I, I want to help you. I want to add so much value. So I'm helping you accomplish your vision. You know what I mean? So, so clarity, confidence kind of are the things that I think about when it turn in terms of what I'm learning. Does that make sense? I'm learning so that I get more clarity. I'm learning so that I get more confidence. That's great. So to really offer some more practical advice, what are some of those uh, foundational books that you would recommend to a marketer that have been foundational for you? Yeah. Breakthrough advertising is one of the, I mean, it's the Bible for advertising. It's, you know, you can pick it up on eBay for like three or 400 bucks. Uh, you know, you can, you find like some, some copies, some physical copies for like 997 bucks. It's literally expensive. Um, I think I would just say one influence the psycho psychology. I'm looking at my, my, my books, the psychology of persuasion by Robert Cialdini is probably one of the first great books uh, about influence. Another thing, it's more of a sales book is called pitch anything by Oren Claff. It's probably the best sales and psychology book in the last five years. Uh, maybe seven years, but uh, by Oren Claff. It's those are the, probably a couple of the, the big books that I that I recommend. So let me give you a hypothetical situation. So what if you were to start all over again? What would you tell Alejandro then, um, based off of everything that you know now? Make money right now, like mm -hmm. fast to cash. Get the fastest to cash as possible, because what happens is a lot of times people hold off, uh, and that was me, man. I'd hold off on things. And uh, man, you know, I remember our family, you know, uh, me and my wife, like I'd be, I'd be paying late fees every single overdraft fees from the bank, you know, hundred bucks, 200, 300 bucks, like a month on overdraft fees, all the greatest marketers I know. And, and two that I really look up to, one is my good friend, Justin Brooke. Another one is Frank Kern, like cash in hand is so valuable to business because when you make money now you can speed up the process to make even more money i was literally on a on a, on a call with uh, frank kern um it was a training uh, in a live training that he did about a month uh, 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 an hour ago and that's exactly what he's talking about is like make sales like now and so for me i spent so much time fearing that the fear of rejection the fear of failure. Like if I ask people, I create a course, I ask people, or I create a workshop or paid training and I ask people and they say, no, I'm going to be crushed. I'm a fraud, imposter syndrome. And so for me, man, I'm, I'm working through this right now. I'm coming out with some courses and things of that nature. And I'm just like, shoot, man, I got to start creating that content. Now I'm making money now as opposed to, to putting that off. Do you think the same philosophy and idea would apply to somebody who recently lost their job or it has, you know, potential fear of losing their job uh, right now with COVID-19? Absolutely. Like, like, like you can't afford, I mean, unless you live with mom at home, that, I, I, that wasn't my luxury, right? Like I had to make things happen. So either you got to, it's, I think it's, I think it's more difficult right now to find a good job a good paying job than starting a business and starting to make cash. I, I do. And so for me, like we're going to look back in 10, 20, 30 years, there were people in the recession that seized the opportunity. Like that's the difference between great leaders and, and, and good leaders is someone that not only sees it, a lot of people see the opportunity. Oh man, it's the land grab. It's, you know, people make millions during the reset, you know, during the great depression, like it's a great time, but then they seize it. A lot of people see it. They don't do anything. I'm in a way, you know, you got to seize the opportunity for me. You know, I, I think if I'm a, if I'm a marketer right now and I don't ever want to start a business, I don't want employees that gives me anxiety, then, you know, go find a job for sure. Like absolutely. If that's what you want to do, but man, for a marketer that man d likes marketing, but doesn't like going to a job and wants more freedom and knows that in five or 10 years, they want to start their own thing. Then why not start that thing now in one of the greatest opportunities right now if you look at the you study the great depression man like that's what happened so many businesses and opportunity like look at how much stimulus packages banks and like literally 
businesses are, money's being fed back. Like there's a lot of people without jobs, but there's still money coming in from the government and there's people still paying. I've purchased like three courses, two or three books in the last like 30 days because I want to learn what else am I going to, I have more time on my hand. And so people are investing into things. Here's the thing about the e-learning business, you know, the education business, it's going to be a billion dollar a day business by 2025. And so for me, man, I'm, you know, Wayne Gretzky said, I, I skate to where the puck's going, not where it's at. And so, man, I just think it's a big opportunity for marketers. Like I would, I, I think anybody that's watching that says a legit marketer can easily find three clients to pay them 1500 bucks a month to run Facebook and Instagram ads for them in like the next 30 days, like no problem. And so, so it's just a matter of having the clarity that I can do this and the confidence that I can do it and actually just going to do it. It's it, how we were texting the other day. It's like, it's not that hard. Like you just got to do it. Doing is the best form of thinking. The problem is mo most marketers are, are, they take too much time in their thinking, they're plotting, I'm planning, I'm doing this, I'm researching. Cool. Other people are just, they're just too naive not to just go do it. You know what I mean? Awesome. That's great advice. So in this last section of this uh, interview slash call, uh, I want to go into rapid fire questions. And uh, my first question to you is, uh, what is your favorite marketing tool and or software? Favorite tool, uh, I would say is probably ClickFunnels. Um, it's a, it's, it's a little clunky. It's not the best, but like it does the work. I don't want to overthink and spreadsheets on what the best marketing tool is. Right. So again, ClickFunnels is great because it creates landing pages. It creates funnels. It, it could be, you know, my checkout page, all of that stuff to really run a business. Like you don't even need a blog. You can put like everything on ClickFunnels right now. And I, I love ClickFunnels. Yeah, I agree. That's great software. So now what is your favorite course you've taken of all time? My favorite course of all time is probably product launch formula. I took in like 2007 or eight and, uh, you know, uh, you know, I still use it for our clients. I still use it, the thinking behind it for my church. I still use it for the events we market. It's definitely the best, best course I've ever invested in. Now, what's your favorite book of all time? Uh, you, you, you mentioned earlier how uh, there were some foundational marketing and sales books, but what's like that one book that you consistently read uh, every year or always go back to for inspiration? Um, the first one, that I, and I got I to gotta think about that, but the first one uh, that I would say is actually a book called Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters. And uh, it's a book I read. It's the only book I read every year. And it's literally about how to be a good dad. Um, and so I think that's pertinent here because if, if you can't fix, I always say this, if your personal life sucks, your professional life will suck. And so I really believe that your, your professional life will suck if your personal life is not in order. And so, um, so, so I really, it's really important for me to be a great dad and a great husband, even though I think I fail about it. I fail every day at it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm just looking, man. Uh, I think, uh, some of the, you know, influence was amazing. Breakthrough advertising was amazing. Um, uh, and then the last one I would say probably, uh, positioning um, by Trout and Reese. I think this is for everybody is story brand. I, I think that's actually a really good book. Building a story brand by Donald Miller it talks a lot about messaging. I think that's a great book as well. Um, and so going into the last question within this rapid fire question, um, what is, or, or not what, who is your favorite marketer, uh, of all time or just favorite marketer in general that you get inspiration from? Yeah, I, I would say it's my friend, Justin Brook, and the thing, I'm just grateful that he's my friend. Um, you know, he runs a company called adskills.com. It's got about 15,000 of the top media buyers in the world on there. He was talking about media buying when everyone was talking about SEO, and I was like, why would you pay money for trap? And so they teach native advertising, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, GDN, Google Display Network, Facebook, Instagram, uh, solo ads, email marketing, you know, like they're just... Just when you, if you want to be a great advertiser, adskills.com is just by far the best. And, 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 and he's helped me more than anyone else. And then I said, this, I think the second person would be Frank Kern. Um, uh, just, just, 
just brilliant, brilliant marketer. I love Gary V watching him from how he executes. Uh, I watch, I watch Gary V how he does it. Not necessarily always what he says, um, more how he builds audience than actually what he says. Yeah. Those are three solid guys. So now as we wrap this to a close, um, where can people find more about you and, and as far as what you're doing within the marketing space or just where can people connect with you online? Yeah, to engage and connect most uh, is probably Instagram, even though I haven't posted in months there, post like 10 times a year, but uh, I, I post more stories um, there and uh, in the DMs, share memes. So if you want to share memes with me, uh, DM me on Instagram. It's at Alejandro Reyes. It's probably the best place uh, to connect. Great. Well, thanks, uh, Alejandro, for hopping on this call. Really appreciate you as a, as a friend, as a marketer, and as a leader. Um, th th this uh, call has been very valuable to me and hopefully to the community online. Um, and with that said, uh, thanks. Th thank you so much for hopping on this call. Yeah, the last thing, let me say this, man. I told you that confidence was so important for those that are watching. Um, it's literally... You're, if you're if you're furloughed, if you're laid off, if you're you know getting fired by clients, it really it really takes your you know your psyche, your mind, your state takes a real big blow. And I think it's the the ones there's 26 million of us, right? That 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 this has happened to in America, the ones that you know what turn you know flip a switch and go you know what, irregardless of how I feel right now. I've got to lock in. I've got to have confidence um, because I know I've had success before. I've know I've done this before, and I'll do it again. If you have that crazy, naive, insane, risky type of confidence, I think you'll make it out of this thing better. But invest in yourself. You don't want to come out of COVID by going, "Man, I, I squandered that time. I didn't learn." You could actually become a better marketer as a result. So, man, good luck to everyone watching.